Hey everybody, the purpose of this video here is to show you how to use the FTP program CyberDuck. CyberDuck is a free FTP program that you can download and use on your own computer, either Mac or PC, to connect to your web hosting account and make changes on your server. Before watching this video in its entirety, we recommend that you first install CyberDuck on your own computer. That way you can follow along while watching the video and feel more comfortable using the program on your own. If you haven't downloaded CyberDuck yet, you can click on the link we've provided in this tutorial to do so. We even have a tutorial showing you exactly how to download it if you need additional help. Just click on whichever version is applicable to you, Mac or PC. And just be aware that while our video here is going to show the use of CyberDuck on a Mac, it should look and function almost exactly the same if you are using a PC. Understanding how to use an FTP program can be really valuable, especially for tasks like manually installing or upgrading WordPress or Profoto, uploading large music files, or backing up your site. In general, it's not too difficult to use, but like any other program, it may take just a little getting used to. To help you get a better feel for using CyberDuck, this video will show you the most common things you'll be doing with FTP. That way you'll have more confidence using CyberDuck for a variety of tasks. Let's get started. First thing obviously is to launch the CyberDuck program. Once it's open, before you do anything else, there's one small change for you to make in the preferences area that might help you later on. Go to CyberDuck Preferences. You'll see a lot of options here and you don't really need to worry about any of these. The default options will work just fine, but for our change, you want to click on Browser and then check the Show Hidden Files box. What this will do is ensure that you have access to any hidden files, which once in a while you might need. That way you don't get stuck later on trying to find something you can't see. Now that we've made that change, let's connect CyberDuck to your host's web server. A web server is basically just another computer that is connected to the internet with a hard drive that has a bunch of files on it. What our FTP program, in this case CyberDuck, is going to do is connect to that hard drive over the internet and then allow us to see what is on that hard drive. Once we're connected, we can add new files, delete files, or edit files on the remote server, all from right within our program. So all our FTP program is really doing is connecting our computer to another hard drive on a different computer through the internet. To connect to your host server, click on the Open Connection icon in the upper left corner. In the pop-up that appears, you have three things you need to fill in. Your server, your username, and your password. If you don't know what any of this information is, you'll want to contact your web host and ask them for your FTP login information, specifically these three things. You won't want to ask us because unfortunately we don't host your Profoto site ourselves, so we won't know what any of that information is. Once you've got it, go ahead and fill in your server, username, and password. You'll also see a port box, but it is almost always the default 21, so you can go ahead and ignore that. Then go ahead and click connect. Now if you click connect and you get any sort of error message stating that you could not connect to the server, you want to make sure and verify the login information you entered. And if it still doesn't work, then you'll want to contact your web host and ask them to verify it for you. Once you've successfully connected, you'll notice that the display is very similar to a finder window on a Mac or a file manager screen on a PC, with all of the server files and folders displayed. You can click on the arrows to the left of the folders to see what's inside of them, or you can double click on them to go right inside of them. Again, remember you're basically just looking at another hard drive that is connected to the internet. Now that you're here, you just need to get your bearings and figure out where you are and what you're looking at so that you can navigate around. To get started, you'll want to locate the root directory of your server. Think of it this way, the root directory of your server is where the root of your domain is located. So any files that would run in the root of your domain, say mysite.com, would be located in the root of your server. 
The root directory can be labeled any number of things, although it's usually called public underscore HTML, like in our example here, HTTP docs, www, or something like that. In our video here, the server we are logged into has a root directory called public underscore HTML. So we're going to go into that public underscore HTML folder, and you can see we have a number of files and folders that we're going to use for our demonstration purposes here. And just so you're aware, any folder you see in your root directory, like for example the blog folder here, is called a subdirectory folder. Any subdirectory folder would be viewable on a browser by going to your domain and adding that folder name to the end of the domain. So in our case, if we go to netribbitsandbox.com slash blog on the browser, we would be viewing what's in that blog folder on our server. Probably the most common thing that you'll be using your CyberDuck program to do is to upload files or folders to your web server. And the great thing about this is that it's super easy to do. All you need to do is simply click the files or folders from your own computer, like from the desktop, finder, or file manager window, and then drag them right into your CyberDuck program. That's it. So in this case, I have a sample files folder here on my desktop with some different files inside, and I'm just going to click and drag it into the CyberDuck window right inside of our root directory here, and that folder will automatically upload right to the server. Be aware that CyberDuck may prompt you if any of the files or folders with the same name already exist on the server when you're trying to upload. And it will warn you that an existing file or folder on the server will be overwritten. So that way you can double check whether you want to do that or not. Similarly, if you have any files or folders on your server that you want to download to your own computer, just click and drag them from the CyberDuck window right onto your own computer desktop window and they'll download. Again, pretty easy. So now you can see that our sample files folder and all of its contents are on the web host server. And let's say we actually didn't want it right in the root public underscore HTML directory, but wanted it inside of another folder, like inside of our blog folder. Just click and drag the sample files folder right into the blog folder. Click the refresh button at the top of the screen and open your blog folder. You'll see the sample files folder is inside. And if you want to delete a file or folder on your server, you can simply right click on the file or folder, choose delete, confirm the deletion, and now it's gone off the server. Now that we've shown uploading, downloading, moving, and deleting files on your server, the next thing we're going to want to talk about is file permissions. It's not extremely important that you understand what permissions are exactly for files or folders. It's just important to note that sometimes, to fix a particular problem, you might have to change a file or folder permissions to a different value. To do this, click once in a file or folder, then right-click and choose Info. In the pop-up box that appears, make sure that the Permissions area is selected. In this area, you'll see a field with some numbers in it and a bunch of different checkboxes. You'll see that as you check and uncheck the boxes, the number in the field will change. Almost always in our tutorials, or if you contact us directly, we're going to have you make changes so that that value is either 755 or 777. So you can check and uncheck the boxes accordingly until you get that value, or you can just enter it directly into the field. When you're done, just close the pop-up window and your changes will be saved. Additionally, you can even change permissions to a whole group of files. To do this, highlight a number of files on the server, right-click, choose Info, check the boxes how you need them to be, and now all of those files will have that particular permission setting. The last thing we're going to do now is show you how to edit a file that's on your server. Basically the way it works is that we'll download the file from the server, open it and edit it, then re-upload it back to the server. So for example, let's say we have this file, file3.php, here on the server and we're going to edit it. Click and drag it to your desktop so that it downloads to your desktop. To open and edit it, 
you'll want to make sure you're using a program like TextEdit on Mac, Notepad on PC, or something like that. Almost always, the files you're going to be editing need to be opened in a program like this because if they're opened in Microsoft Word, for example, it can cause issues. So you want to use a plain text editor program like the ones I just mentioned. Open the file, make your changes, and then save. Then, to re-upload the file to the server, just click and drag it back into the CyberDuck window as we showed near the beginning of this tutorial. CyberDuck will prompt us about overriding the existing file, so we'll click to continue to overwrite, and now our edited file is on the server. That's it. Now you should know how to do all of the major things you'll need to use FTP for, like navigating around on your server, uploading files and folders, moving files and folders around, changing files and folder permissions, and editing files that are on your server.